Good morning, everyone, and I appreciate everybody uh, being here. It's certainly a pleasure and an honor to be uh, at this stage sharing with you what I envision to be a, uh, a case study. And I think the, this morning's presentations really set a clear uh, foundation and context uh, for my conversation with you uh, today, uh, which is about uh, the National Science Foundation Advanced Institutional Transformation Program at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Now, I while I was looking at the program for today, uh, I did notice that at the front of the program, at least uh, five of the sponsoring institutions are current or former National Science Foundation advanced IT, uh, Institutional Transformation Grant institutions. So that speaks highly of the role that the NSF Advanced Program is playing uh, throughout the United States in enhancing gender equality, gender inclusion, gender diversity as it relates to uh, women in STEM disciplines. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you basically a case study about the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley and our uh, uh, advanced program. And just so you have an idea, the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley is part of the University of Texas system. We have about 14 uh, institutions that compose the UT system. Over 200,000 students are part of that system. Over 87,000 faculty and staff and roughly a 17 17.9 or $18 billion budget for the UT system, which is equivalent to about 16 billion euros. So it is the largest system in the state of Texas and one of the largest and strongest systems uh, in the United States. And we were fortunate to be selected as part of the U uh, advanced program, National Science Foundation. This is a five-year program, uh, $3.1 million, or so about 2.8 uh, million euros. And I have the pleasure of serving as the principal investigator, as our provost for UTRGV, and the principal investigator for the UTRGV advanced program. And as you can see here, the major goal of the advanced program at UTRGV is to increase the representation and advancement of women faculty, especially Latinas or Hispanic female faculty in STEM disciplines throughout the University of Texas, uh, Rio Grande Valley. And just for uh, your information, we are uh, a, a new university. We're about two years old, but we are the result of a consolidation of the University of Texas Pan American that has been around since 1927 and the University of Texas at Brownsville. Uh, so we are currently about 28,000 students, uh, but our university spans the entire Rio Grande Valley. So map, uh, think of a map of the United States then think of a map of Texas, and then go to the southern tip of Texas, right at the U.S.-Mexico border. That's where the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley is. And so we have a distributed university. And uh, from Brownsville or South Padre Island to Rio Grande City, um, to your left, it's about 200 kilometers or about 120 miles. So we are one university, but distributed throughout the Rio Grande Valley. If you take a look at the UTRGV profile, we have that about 27, over 27,000 students are uh, at the UTRGV. Of those, 57% are females, and so 57% of our student population are females. We have uh, close to 1,200 faculty, of which 60%, or 689, are tenure or tenure track faculty members. And as you can see, only 34% of that uh, uh, population, faculty population, uh, are females. And if you take a look at our 219 STEM faculty, only 16% a female. If I added another pie chart and included the College of Engineering, then about under 10% of those are female faculty. So you can see the STEM programs are dealing with a very serious issue in the United States and, and uh, globally as well in terms of women representation in STEM fields. And so our goal as UTRGV, and we are now in our fifth year of the, or the last year of our NSF program, which ends uh, at, in December or in October of this year. And our goal is to increase the representation of women in STEM fields and in leadership positions. And of course, to address issues of climate change uh, at the university level and developing policies and guidelines to enhance diversity and gender inclusion at UTRGV. And so we've taken a very comprehensive look at our goals and our initiatives, uh, ranging from recruitment, uh, that is reaching out, recruiting women in, for gender uh, 
uh, women uh, in STEM fields at UTRGV to the advancement of females uh, through promotion, through the ranks, through a, from assistant to associate to full professor, but also increasing the visibility, the presence and impact of women in leadership positions. We've taken a look at policy and climate issues at UTRGV and developing initiatives and policies to enhance the climate at the university to focusing on education and empowerment, uh, for especially for women, but across the university, because we feel it's particularly important to engage both men and women in this process, and really to gauge how successful we've been. We have a social science study that has taken a look uh, every year in terms of our progress and uh, how we're moving forward in terms of our goals. So let me start with recruitment. And the major things that we've uh, engaged in is really taking a comprehensive look at all stages of the recruitment process. And this is faculty uh, recruitment from uh, more, uh, the most important, I think, is providing significant training to the members of the different search committees that form part of this UTRGV uh, search process to enhance and expand and strengthen the campus visits. And we're doing this through our women's faculty network. As part of the NSF advanced program at UTRGV, four years ago, we established a women's faculty network uh, and which has become a very powerful entity within the university and a model that's been emulated across the country in the United States. We've also focused on enhancing our startup funds for women faculty in STEM fields and we use the NSF funding for that, and focusing on dual career support, particularly focusing on partner hires. So we've done a significant amount of partner hires at UTRGV, particularly to bring in women in STEM fields, and that's been very critical. So when we look at the recruitment process, we look at all stages of the recruitment process, from uh, the, uh, the formation of the committee to ensuring we have a diverse committee in terms of gender diversity as well, uh, to looking at the job description to make sure that it includes issues of diversity, our commitment to campus and climate that fosters diversity and inclusion, and highlighting the key role that advanced plays in our university to uh, advertisement, vetting uh, the uh, interviews uh, and the committees. We vet all the, uh, the, uh, uh, the candidate pools, I should say, to ensure that we have diverse candidate pools. And if we do not have diverse candidate pools, particularly as it relates to gender diversity, the candidate pool will not be certified and we return it back to the department. Of course, that creates a lot of pushback and a lot of issues, but it has worked incredibly well in the case of UTRGV. And then, of course, in terms of making offers that are very attractive to all faculty, but particularly to uh, women, Hispanic women, and gender uh, in STEM fields. In the area of advancement, we've developed a variety of initiatives to encourage uh, the promotion of women throughout the ranks and throughout leadership roles. Uh, of particular interest, I'm going to mention the first four, the Leadership Institute, we want to really develop bench strength in terms of our leaders and ensuring that we have uh, engaged a woman faculty that become leaders, academic leaders at UTRGV. Uh, Administrators Fellows Program uh, allows our faculty and particularly women faculty to serve as fellows with the provost, vice president for student success, vice president for student administration, really to get people uh, in the mode and thinking about leadership positions at our institution. The Summer Writing Institute uh, for, for Women uh, takes place every summer uh, in South Padre Island, and the idea is to have a one week uh, all to yourselves working with other colleagues to promote writing and promotion uh, in the discipline. And then uh, very critical for us is the Associate to Full Professor program. As you very well know, if you are in higher uh, education, particularly if you go through these rank systems, it is very typical for many faculty to simply stay stuck at the associate professor level. And what is true for all faculty, it's even more so for women faculty. So we've developed this one-year program for associate professors to uh, provide training, to provide advancement, to ensure that they go through the process of publishing, getting grants, etc., and to become promoted to professor. Now, during this uh, four, four or five year period, if you look at our UTRGV women in leadership uh, positions, 
We started back in 2012 with about 32%, which is already uh, uh, high compared to the figures we've heard uh, this morning, and that's increased uh, to 36%. Not a dramatic uh, improvement, but certainly improvement in the right direction, and we continue to move in that direction. So 36% of administrators at UTRGV are either department chairs, associate deans, deans, associate vice presidents, or vice presidents uh, at the University of Texas Rio Grande the Valley, so we're certainly making a significant progress in that area. Key about uh, institutional transformation is change and change in climate and change in culture. So we are also focusing on policy and climate and developing policies and initiatives to tell our faculty, to tell junior faculty, to tell potential candidates for UTRGV that climate matters, that gender matters at UTRGV. As I mentioned previously, our dual career partner hires are particularly important for us and we provide a lot of emphasis in these initiatives. In the fostering positive and supportive uh, climate, we continue to develop our climate surveys to measure how things are moving forward. We provide mentoring awards, particularly for departments who have played a critical role in gender and gender diversity. And we've established throughout the university, uh, throughout our multiple campuses, uh, nursing mother suites as well to promote a family-friendly atmosphere and climate. And these are extensively used at UTRGV and very much uh, welcomed. Looking at education empowerment, I mentioned already uh, the critical role that the Women's Faculty Network plays at UTRGV. They meet on a regular basis. They are represented in my executive council, which is the academic affairs decision-making process uh, council or decision-making council for UTRGV. Uh, they serve on, on my uh, council and play a critical role in that process as well. As has been mentioned throughout the morning, training uh, at all levels, the training of search committees, the training of tenure and promotion committees with a focus on implicit bias, with a focus on gender diversity and inclusion has been very, very important for us. And another mechanism that we've been looking at and we just completed uh, this past year as part of our commitment to uh, the advanced program have been the gender equity uh, salary adjustment. So we took the look at faculty throughout the university across all seven colleges and we looked at women and men faculty and we said all else equal, that is rank, time and rank, department, et cetera, salary should be equal, but of course, as you might imagine, they were not equal for many, uh, for many of our women faculty. So we actually went through a process of adjusting uh, salaries for female faculty. And along the way, we found a variety of male faculty who also had a variety of issues and made some gender equity adjustments as well. And that really shows the strong commitment of the university to addressing gender uh, equity issues in the area of salaries as well. So what we focused on is developing best practices and trying to implement our best practices at UTRGV and strategies as well. From providing leadership, so having the president and the provost, for example, as the principal investigator and actively engaged in the advanced program sends a strong message to our faculty that gender diversity is very important for us actively engaging the deans and the department chairs in discussions about gender diversity and inclusion is also uh, very important. Uh, providing change or focusing on change in recruitment, attitudes, and culture. Having regular trainings for our committees and for our faculty regarding implicit bias and the importance of promoting excellence and diversity and that excellence and diversity are not mutually exclusive, but are reinforcing their part of a community of uh, excellence that we promote at UTRGV is particularly important. Adding accountability, adding accountability through the evaluations. So for example, for all the deans that report to me, uh, a criteria or metric of, uh, for their evaluation is how they are doing in terms of promoting gender diversity and actually the results in terms of you know what proportion of your faculty are female faculty, what proportion of your leadership teams are female faculty. These are very critical and we take a comprehensive look at these as well. As I mentioned before, certifying the pools uh, for uh, 
faculty candidates is critically important. And again, although we received some pushback on that, things are getting much better as we move forward. Also taking a look at uh, support for mid-career, I talked about the associate to full program. I would like to talk about the expanding mentoring opportunities and expanding travel support, especially for women in STEM fields to ensure that they're developing, that they're uh, going out there and presenting their scholarship and getting grants from the National Science Foundation and other institutions is particularly uh, important. And as we move to promote uh, voice and advocacy, we're developing a whole variety of initiatives throughout the Rio Grande Valley and throughout Texas, including now uh, the UT system, University of Texas system, has developed what we call the Chancellor's Network for Women's Leadership. So now uh, this is our women's faculty network at UTRGV, but expanded throughout the UT system, and uh, UTRGV plays a key uh, leadership role in that process. Again, reducing service burden for women and faculty of, of color, especially tenure track uh, faculty who turn to be, uh, tend to be overburdened with uh, service and committees, etc. We as deans and as provosts, we take a careful look to ensure that we provide them the time to focus on teaching and particularly scholarship at UTRGV. Uh, increasing uh, the voice uh, recognition and visibility of our programs is particularly important. One of the areas that I would like to highlight here is our dual career uh, symposium, which was also funded by the National Science Foundation. We have participation of faculty uh, throughout the United States, and we're uh, having a book that's coming out uh, hopefully this year or the beginning of next year, focusing on dual careers uh, and women in STEM fields for, uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. Again, the focus on developing family-friendly policies and programs through tenure and promotion, stopping the clock, uh, looking at a workload, modified instructional duties, uh, for especially for women faculty and male faculty as well. And again, fostering positive campus and departmental climate. We do uh, significant climate surveys and exit surveys, particularly for people who leave or uh, UTRGV to see what are the causes, why are they leaving, what are the issues with campus climate, with uh, salaries and things of that nature. And we also have equity and diversity advocates that serve on all our search committees. And the idea here is to help us certify our pools, make sure that the committees are diverse, make sure that the uh, pools of candidates that uh, we select for interviews are diverse, and the people that come to campus for interviews are also diverse. So what we aim to do is develop best practices uh, through our university, focusing on the institutionalization of the advanced program. As you might imagine, because it is an institutional transformation grant, one of the things that the National Science Foundation requires is that this program or these initiatives be institutionalized at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Given that we are now at year five, or the last year for our grant, we have throughout the year, starting in year two, been integrating each of these initiatives into a variety of programs through the university so that when the advanced program comes to conclusion, these initiatives that I just discussed with you or presented to you uh, will continue to be part of UTRGV with UTRGV funding that is funded by the university. Because the goal is to maintain the programs to ensure sustainability to ensure that we continue to network not only across the Rio Grande Valley, not only with the institutions in Texas, but across, uh, across the United States. And there's a variety of institutions, again, highlighted in your, uh, in your pamphlet here that we've been working on as part of the advanced program. And so again, one of our goals is to continue to communicate and disseminate the information and the impact that Vance has had at our university and incorporating our Vance goals into the fabric of UTRGV so that these are not any longer advanced goals, but these are goals of our institution. These have been part and have become part of our strategic planning process of our initiatives uh, moving forward. 
And one of the things that we've done, although advance is geared to women and STEM women, uh, in, and particularly Hispanic women in STEM, we have brought in participation of all these initiatives that I've mentioned uh, to women across the university. Of course, NSF pays for the expenses for uh, advanced women in STEM fields. We pay as an institution for the rest, but that shows the commitment to diversify across the university. And in these uh, uh, types of uh, training programs and the uh, summer programs, etc. we also uh, invite male faculty to participate because we want to establish a broad consensus, broad support across the university, no matter if you're in engineering, in sociology, in humanities, in physics, in philosophy, that you support these types of initiatives and that you actively participate in promoting gender diversity, inclusion, uh, even if you're male or you're female, that you're an active part of these types of initiatives because this goes to the issue of enhancing campus climate. But at the end of the day, I think part of our success stems from the fact that we hold people accountable for the success of the uh, advanced program. And so the president holds me accountable, I hold my deans accountable, deans hold department chairs accountable, because it is critical that we all work together to support the work of the advanced program and that at the end of this year, when that program officially comes to uh, fruition or conclusion, through the uh, funding we receive by NSF, that it remains as part of the core of the university and that it is built into the fabric of UTRGV. So thank you so much for your, uh, for your attention. And if we have time, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Indeed. Um, Chris, do we have time for a question? I think we do, huh? We have time for one question. And it's up at the front. If you could please state your name and affiliation. My name is Janice Aldridge Wright, and I'm from the University of uh, Western Sydney in Australia. If you'd mind saying that again, just for the recording. My name Thanks. is Janice Aldridge Wright. I'm from the Western Sydney University in Australia. I was just um, congratulations on a very, um, shall I say, overwhelming program. I think you have been busy for quite some time. Yes, we have. Um, I'd just like to ask you, could you um, please say a little bit more about your tender or your tenure and promotion stop clock? Yes. And so the, the, one, one of the goals here is that we allow, uh, as many other fa uh, universities do, but we place a, a particular focus on uh, allowing uh, folks to stop uh, the tenure clock uh, for maternity leave, for example, also for, for sickness, also for taking care of uh, children who are, uh, have some sort of uh, illness or families or parents who have some sort of extended or chronic illness. And so we will stop the clock for the faculty member, that means that during that period that you're out, whether it's a few weeks or whether it's a year, that we will stop the clock and we will not count that against your uh, five to six years that you have for tenure and all promotion at UTRGV. Okay, thank you very much.